All right, so we are going to get started here um, by uh, getting ready to go and create a awesome Google site for um, our students that are gonna be remote learning, but also uh, our students that are going to be face-to-face um, -face with us in our classroom as well. Um, so Google Sites is uh, fairly, um, fairly innovative. It's a very good uh, kind of easy way to create your own website. Um, and uh, this is, I'm gonna kind of walk through some easy things to do and then some things you can do to make it um, a little more uh, complex and kind of uh, look good as well. Um, so this can be used to create something that's uh, simple or it can be used to create something that um, it looks nice and uh, is a little more complex as well. Um, so when you come to Google Sites uh, logged into your Belleville Bramos email, um, it's going to take you to a screen like this um, and you're going to click create and then um, it'll pop up in new sites or in classic sites. New sites is easier to use. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and click on that. Okay, um, as it loads, it should present you with something that looks like this. This is a very blank, um, easy uh, site that is kind of starting from the basics and you can add stuff to it. Um, feel free to use a template if you like. I don't just because I had my own pictures. Uh, so what you're gonna do um, is click on pages um, and this will allow you to create your own pages uh, within your website. So that it's up to you what you would like to do um, when it comes to pages, uh, if you are a teacher who has multiple preps um, and would like to have a page for each of your class, you can certainly do that. Um, I know there are a lot of people who want to make it so they have one website for all of their classes, uh, which is something you can do as well. So um, when I create uh, a Google site, I just have one for a student page. Uh, so you'd click on the plus down here and then type in student page and click done and that'll add a student page and then I add one for parents as well. Um, and this is just kind of covering the bare minimum of what the district would like us to require uh, when it comes to Google Sites. So now that you have those two added, um, they will show up up top here um, on your site, uh, which is an easy way to navigate to them and from them. So you can click home, student page, parent page. Um, if you come back to home, that's kind of where we're going to get things started, and then we'll edit student page and parent page a little later on. Uh, up here where it says enter site name, um, you can just go ahead and enter something simple. Uh, I type in Mr. Jennings uh, classes. And then for viewing purposes, I find it a lot easier um, when you're viewing it on a computer and especially on a phone. If you click on this navigation settings here and then uh, where it says top and mode, you click on this drop down menu and make it so it's viewed on this side. Um, what that'll do is instead of showing all your pages up here, you click on this little uh, button right there and it'll show student page and parent page. Um, so that'll allow you to do all of that. Um, now, those of you who have seen the template I created, um, notice that it says it's like a nice fancy picture back there. Um, and in order to do that, I have used this website called Pixlr.com, uh, which is a free um, photo editing site. Um, and if you come to Pixlr.com, you'll be presented with this screen. I wanted to show you how to get to the place where I have been editing pictures. Uh, so you click on Pixlr X, and it will take you to this website. So you can see I already have a lot of things created. Um, I'll take you through uh, creating something new. So um, what I use is the stock search and it just searches stock images. Um, so if you type in like classroom here, it'll take a little bit, but it'll present you with um, some different things. This is the one I ended up using. Um, and if you click on the image, it'll present you with this. Um, I use full HD and then just click apply. So you're presented with this now, um, and uh, you may be wondering how to add text and things like that. You can mess around cropping things. Um, so like if I want just um, this part of the image, um, which I think is what I did with mine, uh, you can do that and then click uh, apply down here and it'll just crop that part, which is a little bit easier if you're making a heading for uh, your Google site. Um, so to add text, um, it's pretty simple. All you uh, have to do is click on the T down there, which simplify, sim simplifies text, and then you can click on add new text. Um, it'll pop up with some random generated text. All you have to do is delete that over here to the left and type in what you would like to say. So this is going to say Mr. Jennings classes. 
um, which is kind of just a generic title. Um, certainly, if you're doing one site for each of your preps, you can change it to uh, Mr. Jennings World Geography or Mr. Jennings Algebra, so on and so forth. Um, I like to center the text and bold it. Um, and then if you want to mess around with fonts, you can. Um, I've kind of uh, gotten used to using some different fonts. Uh, so let's just select this one at random, and then you can change the size by kind of dragging it a little bit here um, and dragging this up. So the nice thing about this is like most Google things, it'll show up with the lines that show that it's center. Um, so right here, you know, it's center both ways. So once you have something like this created, um, you have your text, you have your background, you can click save, um, and it'll prompt whether or not you want to download it. And if you click download, It'll pop up down here in the bottom, which is signifying that it's just downloading the image. Um, so once you're done using the photo editor, you can come back to your Google site. Um, and then for the cover, um, all you have to do is hover over here and you're gonna change the image and you're going to click upload. Uh, this will prompt you um, with your uh, files uh, screen. I'm on a Mac, so it looks a little bit different, but it'll bring up um, what you have. So I'm gonna click on the image I just downloaded today, uh, which is the Mr. Jennings classes, and then click open, and you'll see that it automatically pops up here. Uh, we do have an issue though, because we have this text already present. Uh, so if you just click on that, um, it'll pop up with this, and you can just click the trash can and delete that. Now you'll notice that the shading's a little bit different. It's kind of foggy and blurry. If you click on this little star button right here, um, it removes the readability adjustment, and it makes it a little brighter. So. There you have it for in a, uh, inserting your um, kind of cover for your class. Um, you may wanna preview what this looks like. And uh, anytime I preview, um, it'll be coming up to this button right here that says preview. It's right next to the redo and undo. Um, if you click preview, it will take you to different um, previews of your class. You can view it on a large screen, you can view it on a tablet, and you can also see what it looks like on the phone. Um, so you can see it's kind of condensed on the phone, but that's okay because I'm sure most of the students will be viewing it on a Chromebook and they'll be presented with something like this. <clears throat> All right, um, so adding different links to um, your homepage here. Uh, I've been kind of asked uh, if you can make it simple, if you can make it complicated. So I'll show you uh, kind of both ways here. Um, the way I've done it um, is added different pictures that show student portal and parent portal or student page and parent page uh, using images and then linking them. Um, so I'll start off with that. And then if you don't want to get that complex, I'll show you an easier way to do it as well. Um, so uh, for this, I once again use that Pixlr website that's up there. Um, but I'm not going to go through uh, editing those pictures again. I'm just going to show you an upload. Um, so these are ones I, I made earlier. Um, and you can see it says parent portal here. Um, and there's one that says student portal somewhere down the line. Uh, so I clicked on uh, my parent portal one and clicked open. Um, and then that'll automatically uh, insert it in a new section on your sites down here. Um, I enlarged it a little bit to make it kind of a bigger button. Um, and then once you have your image inserted, all you have to do is click on this link, uh, insert link button right here that will automatically pop up if you have the image selected. You click on that insert link, and if you have pages already created on your Google site, like alternate pages besides your home page, like student or parent page, it'll automatically pop up with the option for you to link it uh, to this image. So since this is the parent portal, you can click on parent page and then click apply. Now you're gonna do the same exact thing with your student portal um, and just click on this insert link and apply it to the student page rather than the parent page. Okay, um, now once I preview that, okay, uh, I can preview and make sure that if I do indeed click on this picture, it takes me to my parent page. So um, that's how you do it, inserting an image uh, and kind of making it look nice um, and, but it's a little more complex. And if you don't want to take the time to go into a photo editor and make a picture like that, um, you can also do, uh, a, a different kind of, um, this thing as well by inserting a button. Uh, so a button is basically just like a button on any other website. Um, you just name it something. So, um, if I want to just create a button for my student portal, I can type in student portal here. Um, and then link, once again, if you click down here, 
it'll automatically pop up with a uh, student page, parent page. So since this is my student portal, I'm going to click on student page and it'll automatically be linked to that. So I'll insert um, and it'll pop up down here um, if you already have something in this section up top. Um, in order to move it to the same section, all you have to do is drag. Uh, so click hold and drag it up. So what the button does is it essentially acts like this picture. It's just a little less complex because you don't have to go into that photo editor and make a picture with text and things like that as well. Uh, so if you click on preview, come here, click on student portal, uh, it'll take you to your student page. If you're exiting the preview, I don't know if I've said this, uh, all you're doing is clicking down uh, the blue X right here. So uh, let's get back to our home page. Now the home pages that I've made have only contained um, those two things, uh, a button to the student page and a button to the parent page. Um, the only thing I've changed about my home uh, page is making this less white. So I've changed the backgrounds right here by clicking over on the left on this color palette. You click on that and it'll give you uh, different background colors based on your theme. Uh, and you can also make it an image if you would like to. I've gone with just different colors. Um, and if you don't like the color options, you always have the option to come to themes over here on the right where uh, you have your insert and your pages options as well. And there's different uh, themes. So the one that we had selected was simple, but you can go ahead and click on some of these as well. Um, Aristotle, Diplomat, Vision. Uh, Vision is one I've used and uh, you can select the different colors and stuff here as well. Um, which is kind of nice and it gives you a little bit of a variety um, when it comes to changing the backgrounds up. So um, that's uh, changing your themes and everything. Uh, let's get into linking some of the things that the district is requiring us to have on our student and parent pages. I'm going to start off with the student page. So on our student page, um, if you read the email, it, uh, we need to have something um, with the syllabus uh, something with our calendar. Um, and also, uh, there was one other thing, but I'm going to start with the syllabus and the calendar. Uh, oh, a link to your Google Classroom. Perfect. So um, what I'm going to do is uh, do the Google Classroom first, because the Google Classroom is going to be um, kind of where all of your assignments are posted. Um, and so that's going to be important for the students to have access to. Okay. Uh, so what I do is uh, I just came to Google and I typed in Google Classroom. Don't go to the website, just Google search Google Classroom uh, and come to images. Um, and I just selected an image uh, off of uh, the, these uh, images that uh, I thought looked nice. Uh, so we can select this one. Um, if you right click on this image and then save the image as something, uh, you can type in Google Classroom. Uh, I always just save my downloads to the downloads folder and then click save and then come back to sites. Um, you're going to insert that image uh, here. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and click insert uh, over here on the right. I'm going to insert another image and I am going to upload and I'm going to cl click on that Google Classroom upload, uh, that image right there, click open and it'll automatically pop up right here. I made it a little bit bigger. You can see kind of when you're making it bigger, it'll kind of crop off uh, some of it. So make it big enough so you can see the Google Classroom and everything looks kind of nice there. Um, and then what I did was I went ahead and linked this to just the uh, Google Classroom uh, website. So if you come to another tab and type in Google Classroom and then click on Google Classroom right here, it'll bring you to the home page of Google Classroom. If you're logged into your Google account, you'll see all of these different uh, Google Classrooms uh, that you have created or that you have joined. Um, it will do the same thing for everyone else uh, when they click on this link as well. It'll just take them to the classes that they're enrolled in. So if you copy this link up here, come back to your site and then click insert link. You can paste that link that you just copied and click apply. Now, when you click on your preview button and click on the Google Classroom, it will take you to that home page for Google Classroom just to make sure it works. 
Now, uh, for the text next to the Google Classroom, um, you can insert a text box. Uh, it will automatically pop up underneath it. Um, hopefully, in this video, you can see um, there's these little dots right here in the middle of the top of the text box. You just drag that up, and it'll kind of automatically fit in next to your Google Classroom image. Um, so I clicked to edit, and then I went ahead and made a title. Um, so I clicked on the different style of fonts that you have here and did title and typed in Google Classroom. Hopefully they understand that it's Google Classroom based on the link. Um, and then uh, if you hit enter, it'll automatically change from title to normal text uh, below it. And I said, click on the image to the left to access Google classroom. And then I went ahead and uh, put some colons. And then I, uh, as we all don't know what periods we have. So I'm kind of just prepared by typing in first period, um, and then a colon. And then once you have created your Google classrooms, um, you can go ahead and enter in uh, the, um, the codes as well. Now, if you're going to do one Google classroom for each prep, uh, you can go ahead and just type in like geography. Uh, and then the class code will go right here um, and things like that. So Google Classroom is kind of a, a little easier um, because uh, everyone's just going to have the same link to each thing. So geography and debates um, and then that class code as well. Um, so that's what you would type in next to the Google Classroom image. Okay. Um, if you don't want to insert a picture um, and you want to still link Google Classroom, um, you can go ahead and once again, just insert a button. Um, so that's underneath the insert tab over here. Uh, and then just click on button and you can name it Google Classroom. And then for the link, all you have to do is paste the link to Google Classroom, which we had already copied, click insert. Um, and it's a little less fancy, pops up just like a button. Um, but you have that uh, right there. And then whenever someone comes to your website, they will click on this button and it will take them to Google Classroom, okay? Um, the next thing I do uh, is have my syllabus. Uh, so what I've been doing is having the image over here on this side, text on this side, and then alternating as I go down. Um, so I am going to insert, uh, once again, just an image, or if you don't wanna do an image, you can insert a button. Um, so I will insert and then come up to images, upload, and downloads. Oh my goodness, where is everything? Uh, so I had created one previously that says syllabus, so I'm just going to open um, and insert that. And then since my Google Classroom image was over here, I'm gonna drag this kind of over here. Uh, and then let's resize it a little bit, and just make it a little uh, nice and big, readable. Uh, so that says syllabus right there. Um, and then we're going to do the same thing we did with the Google Classroom. Click on text box, drag from these dots up here. Uh, I once again changed it to title, typed in syllabus. And if you hit enter, all you have to do, hit enter. It'll change it automatically to normal text, as you can see there. Uh, and I typed click on the image to the right, or that's right, yes, uh, to view the class syllabus. Um, and that's pretty simple if you only have one prep, okay? Um, because all I did uh, for mine was um, I uh, linked my syllabus to here. So I'm going to show you guys how to do that um, coming to your drive, okay? Um, the easiest way that I have found to link any sort of Google document or sheet um, is by publishing that do document or sheet to the web and then using that link to link to your Google site. And I'll show you guys how to do that. Um, so basically all you have to do is select where your syllabus is. So I'm gonna do my principles of business syllabus. Uh, so I'll click on my principles of business and here's the syllabus right here. Um, something I did change about my syllabus and I don't know if you guys want to, um, but uh, just with all the safety precautions we're gonna be following, I said that all materials need to be provided by uh, the students. Um, it'll just make it difficult to share with all the safety precautions we need to follow. Um, so that's something I did add to the syllabus. Um, and just in case you hadn't thought of it, I figured that would help as well. So I have this document already created. It's updated for this year. And I am going to get a link for it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come to File up top here. 
and I am going to come down to publish to the web. Okay, um, this is already published, but what it's going to do is it's going to give you the option to share the entire document, um, and then it'll say publish down here with a button, and you'll just click publish, and it'll pop up with a link. Okay, so I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this link. I am going to come back to my site, and when my picture right here prompts me with a link up top, I am going to link that uh, link that I got from the Google Doc. When I click apply and you come to the preview and you click on the syllabus, it'll take you to this different website that isn't um, this Google Docs where it has like all the editable things and the names up here and share and who's viewing it. It's just a plain old website. Uh, it says published by Google Drive down here and it just has the document uh, and that's it. Now, the nice thing about this when you publish it to the web is it's gonna update this document every five minutes. So if I were to go in and I were to edit something on my Google uh, Doc right here, every five minutes, it will update um, this syllabus. So if I need to change something because the syllabus wasn't right or anything, every five minutes, this web page is going to update automatically. Um, and that's really nice, uh, especially when we get to like calendars and things like that, because if for some reason you have something changed in your calendar, you can change uh, on your calendar. And then whenever they view this link, it'll automatically change every five minutes. Um, so that's how you would do it um, if, let's say you have a singular prep. Now, I, like most people, have multiple preps. Um, so like I said, you can create a Google site for every prep if you want to, um, but you probably don't want to do that because uh, we don't all have the free time. Uh, so what I have been doing is uh, saying click on the class link below for access to your syllabus. So the nice thing about this is you don't have to worry about linking to an image. You're just going to worry about linking to words. So let's say um, I have my principles of business class. Okay, I'm going to type out principles of business. Then I'm going to highlight these words for the class. And then up top here, there's this little chain link thing that uh, is for inserting a link. I'm going to click on that. Okay, and what that's going to do is it's going to link just those words that we highlighted. So I'm going to paste that same link that we got from publishing this document to the web, and I'm going to click apply. So now you have a link specifically for your principles of business class. If I want to add another one, I can just type in world geography down here, come to my Google Drive, click on world geography, uh, and then click on, I think my syllabus is in this lovely thing. Um, material. And I can go ahead and click on this Google Doc right here that has my syllabus. And once again, I'm gonna do the same exact thing. I'm gonna click on file. I'm going to publish to the web, um, get this link again, copy, come back to my Google site. I'm going to highlight just this class. Click on the little chain uh, that is for insert link, paste, and then click apply. So what that does is that links just those words to my world geography syllabus. So now if I come to preview, I can click on my principles of business and that will bring me to my principles of business uh, syllabus and then click on world geography. And that takes me to my world geography syllabus. And the nice thing I said about publishing it to the web is once again, it'll update automatically every five minutes. So when I first created the syllabus, I didn't have my Google sites done. So I went in and uh, edited my uh, Google doc. And then since it was already published, it's already, uh, it has my Google sites in here because it updated automatically. Uh, so that's inserting uh, your syllabus uh, into the student page of your Google site. Um, and that's two different ways. Um, like I said, if you only have one prep and you only have one syllabus, you can always link it to this syllabus. If you have multiple classes, create some links like this. Um, and so once again, you can go ahead and insert uh, buttons if you would like to as well. Um, the next thing I did was insert a calendar. Um, and the calendar was a little bit trickier for multiple preps um, because I use Google Sheets to create my calendar. Uh, so once again, I had an image created, I uploaded, and I had a calendar image already made uh, somewhere.
maybe I don't have the calendar image already made. Uh, well, anyway, let's pretend this is the calendar in, uh, image. You click open um, and the calendar image comes up. It's the same exact thing. Um, you're uh, going to be presented with an image and then, oh my, uh, cancel. And uh, you can resize it as such. Um, so for my Google uh, Sheets calendar, uh, I have a template that I've been using since I started teaching. Um, and it looks a little like this. Uh, so this is my first nine weeks calendar. Uh, I actually need to change the name because it says first six weeks calendar. Um, so um, I'm gonna go ahead and change that. Uh, but uh, it's broken down into the first um, nine weeks. Now you can see I have all the way up till September 15th uh, made um with the end of my first unit and then i have a few uh that are yet to be determined um and this actually i don't think is the right calendar um maybe somewhere but uh either way um you have your calendar made um and i think i extended mine to include all the way up to the 16th of october which is where the calendar goes um but you have the google sheet looking something like this now, what I've been suggesting to people who have multiple preps and want to link their calendars to one Google site is to use your different sheets down here. So if you have multiple classes, I've been right clicking and uh, duplicating, um, which is gonna go ahead and create a copy of the sheet one um, and uh, then just changing this and then editing the calendar to be about something different. So if I wanna make this um, for my debate calendar, I can go ahead and change that and then just edit everything that I have here. Um, and then just delete these since they're uh, blank. So that covers multiple preps. And then I can just rename these. Uh, so you're gonna right click on this sheet, click rename, and I'm gonna call this World Geography. And I am going to right click on this one, rename, and call this Debate. So once I have this all edited, okay, uh, I can come to file. And then once again, just like you did with the Google Doc, click publish to web. And it'll give you the option to link either the entire document or select sheets. Now what I've been doing and what I've been telling people to do with multiple preps is if you have multiple preps and you want to share all of your calendars, you can uh, click on entire document, publish it as a web page, and then you'll get a link. So you'll copy that link, and then I've been coming back to my Google site and with the calendar image, I know this is syllabus, but I can't find my calendar image, uh, linking that link to the uh, image. And then over here, I've been inserting a text box, uh, and that's just if you double click, um, it pops up with certain things. That's a little tricky though. Um, so inserting, you can click a text box over here um, and then click title type in calendar, or if you're doing multiple calendars, you can type in calendars. Hit enter to get to normal text, and then type click on the image to the left for access to all course calendars. Perfect. So now if I come to preview, and I hope this works, you click on the image, um, and now it takes you to this um, web page of the Google Sheet, but up top here you can see it has the class name. So if I have a student that is looking at my Google site that isn't in World Geography, all they have to do is click on this right there, boom, they have the debate calendar. If they're in World Geography, they click on this, they see this. So all of the calendars are available for all of the students no matter what class they're in. Um, and that just kind of makes things simpler for you as well as the students viewing um, your page as well. So we're, we'll exit out of that preview, and that pretty much covers everything you need to have on your student page, okay? Um, you can go ahead and mess around with the images up here, um, mess around with the title if you want, uh, mess around with certain themes and backgrounds, uh, inserting images, changing the emphasis on things, um, but that pretty much covers the basics of having a link to your Google Classroom, having a link to your syllabus, and having a link to your calendar. Uh, so the next thing we're going to do is edit the parent page. So to get to the parent page, you can either click on pages over here and click on parent page, or you can click on this and come to parent page as well. So our parent page is going to start off 
pretty blank. Um, now it's up to you what you want to put on your Google site as far as parents um, are concerned. Um, I know I have included a kind of a little short uh, summary about my life, who I am, uh, why I'm teaching what I'm teaching, uh, and what the students are going to get out of uh, the class and things like that. Just something to kind of introduce myself to parents. I don't know if we're going to have like a uh, open house uh, this year. So it's something that the parents can look at and be like, okay, that's who's teaching my kid. Um, so what I've been doing is I have been inserting a text box um, kind of over here on the right side uh, that has a title of um, me, Mr. Jennings or uh, something like that. Um, and then hit enter and then type a little bit about yourself uh, right here. And uh, something about your class too your class or classes. Um, and it doesn't have to be long, just a short little thing to introduce yourself. Um, and then over here, I've been inserting a picture of myself. Uh, so upload, um, and I have a lovely picture. Uh, I think it's this one of, yep, uh, my wife, my dog, and my cat. I've been putting that right there. Um, and then if you click on the picture and click on the three little dots right here, uh, you can click add caption and it'll automatically pop up a text box that's fitted to the picture. So I've just been typing my wife, my dog, Leia, my cat, Penny, and me. So um, that's all I've been doing for the meet the teacher section of the parent page. You guys can uh, do whatever you want. If you do need to insert a video or something like that, uh, there is an option to insert something from YouTube. Um, so what I would do is uh, publish your video to YouTube um, and then just insert the YouTube video um, over here. Um, I know uh, that that's probably gonna be something that the uh, elementary school primary uh, kids are gonna want. Um, high school teachers, I'm not putting a video on mine, but uh, that's up to you. Um, the next thing I included is a section for parent contact. Um, this way I can have something where the parents go to, they enter their information. So if I ever need to reach out to them, I know the best time to reach out to them and where they would like to uh, be reached out uh, at, whether it be a phone call, email, text message, something like that. Um, so what I've been doing is creating an image. Um, once again, you can click and insert a button if you'd like to not use an image, but I've been doing an image. So I click on image, upload. Then I have one already created. This one I know I do, there's parent contact form. Click open. Uh, and I've been linking the image to a Google form. Now, if you don't, if you are not already using Google Forms, you should be, because it is going to make your life as a um, remote learning teacher a whole lot easier when it comes to assignments, quizzes, tests, things like that, um, because it's going to be something the kids can do on their computer, um, and then you get the results automatically. Um, so I have uh, one already created, but if you would like to create your own Google Form, all you're going to do is come to your apps right here, and it is this lovely purple thing that says Form. Uh, I'll go ahead and come back to my drive, uh, come to uh, my parent contact information form that I have created right here. Um, what I've included is something that uh, is their email address and it's collecting the email address for me. Um, and then uh, their student's name, the parent's name, the parent's phone number, their email, um, and um, how they would prefer to be contacted. Uh, and then I included a little question right there about anything that they'd like me to know about their child, um, just in case there's some like little quirks or uh, things like that, that um, I might not know that uh, the parent would like me to know. So the nice thing about this Google form is that whenever I get a response to this, it's going to let me uh, click on responses here. Uh, obviously, I have zero responses right now. But um, if I click on this, it's going to create a spreadsheet. So I can print that spreadsheet out and then um, kind of keep it in my desk. And I have all the information I need if I were to ever need to contact a parent. 
Um, so once I have this created and you can create your own, if you absolutely need me to send you my copy, I can make a copy of it and uh, make you the owner. Just let me know. Um, I'm going to come to my uh, Google sites here. Um, and once I have the image created, uh, I can come to send. Uh, and if you click on send, it gives you a couple options. Um, this is to email it out to people. Um, this is a link. Uh, so what I do is I just shorten the URL so it's easier, um, copy this link, and then click on uh, my Google site. And then just like we've linked all of the pictures before, click on the little chain for inserting a link, paste, and apply. So now when I preview and I click on that parent contact form, it will take me to that Google form um, in a fashion where I'm going to have to type everything out. Okay, um, so that's perfect for inserting a Google form to collect information about the parent. Uh, now, next to it, uh, I include kind of just some text over here. Um, click the text box, drag it up, uh, and then make a title that says parent contact. And then enter to change it to normal text and said, click on the image to the left uh, to access a form that um, allows you to fill out your contact information. Something like that. Um, that's just off the top of my head. I'm sure mine sounds a lot better on my site. Um, and then it's up to you what you want to do on the parent page. Uh, since I already created the student page, I've already linked all my syllab uh, syllabi, I've already created my calendars and things like that. I went ahead and just inserted a big text box down here with title font that says, if you would like to see the course calendar or syllabus, please click on the student page. And I go ahead and center that text just so it's kind of down there. Um, and this is just a way that it's easier. Uh, the parents still get the information they need about parent contact and uh, information about the teacher, but then they can access the student page to get access to the course calendar and the syllabus as well. Now, if you want to go ahead and add sections for a syllabus and your course calendar on the parent page, go ahead, feel free to do that. Um, just do things along the lines uh, that we did on the student page. Uh, now, I do need to cover one big thing about Google Sites that I don't know, um, I didn't know right away, um, and so I want to make sure you know it, okay? Um, the biggest thing is when you publish your site, okay? You're, uh, you have everything done with your student page, your parent page, and your home page, okay? You're going to click on this button, Publish up top. That's going to publish it, and then um, you can go ahead and change the web address, which is going to be what's right here, uh, to whatever you want. Um, so Mr. Jennings classes is perfect. I'm gonna click publish and it'll publish everything. Now, you notice that that was pretty easy for me to do. I am doing all of this through my personal email address. So if I were going to be making a site um, that was through my Belleville Brain as an account, um, I would, it would look something like this. So this is the site I created for my principles of business class. And this one was made uh, using my Belleville Bremas. Now this is what you're going to encounter uh, when you publish this site, okay? Um, it's going to look something like this with your web address, and then you are going to change that. And, oh, whoops. I think I'm gonna have to click on the, Yes, um, so it's going to give you the option for links uh, when you publish. You need to make sure that if you create a Google site with your Belleville Bremos um, email, you click on this links uh, thing here and you click change. Now it's very important that the published site is made public. It's going to be automatically set to Belleville ISD which means that anyone in the group Belleville ISD that has a Belleville Bremas email address is going to be able to view it. If they don't, they are not going to be able to view it. So you need to make sure you click public, otherwise a good majority of your parents 
are not going to be able to view your site. Once it's public, click done, publish, do whatever. And now whenever they come to the site, um, you're going to be able, they're going to be able to view the site. Um, the last thing is making sure that um, you're able to copy the link for your site um, and put it somewhere. Um, so as you saw earlier, my world geography uh, syllabus already had the Google site available right there. Um, if you want to get the link, click on publish. Uh, got it. And there are no unpublished changes, so I guess I can't click on publish. Uh, you can click on the sharing aspects. Ooh, maybe not. Uh, yes, the copy and publish the site link. Um, ooh, whoops, let me go home first. Uh, let me go to the principal's site. Um, so I'm home on my uh, principles of business site here. Copy the published site link. Uh, the published site link is going to be a little bit different than it normally is. So you have site.google.com and then it's going to include our bellevillebramas.org in there and then whatever you decide to name your uh, site. So I named mine Jennings Business. Um, so you can copy that link right here and then come to a Google uh, Doc, your syllabus if you want to, um, wherever you want to post your link. And then uh, just all you have to do is, I'm, I'm just going to come down here and uh, paste it in there. And I have that. So this will take them directly to uh, the home of the website that you created. Um, now that's a walkthrough of a very, very simple um, Google site. If you want to get a little more complex, adding in GIFs, um, I know there's a lot of teachers that have seen Bitmoji classrooms and things like that. Um, you can animate this header up here. Um, if you want to do something a little bit more complicated to stand out a little bit, please reach out to me via email um, or text message if you have my phone number or whatever. Um, and I can come see you on one of the work days uh, and we can uh, work out kind of some of those more complicated things, um, putting a Bitmoji, dancing, something like that. Um, some fun things that uh, maybe resonate with your students uh, well. Um, but that does it for um, the, the Google site. If you have any questions, like I said, please email me. Please let me know. But uh, that does it.